All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over eight rules for struggling ICT traders. So if you're struggling or on the verge of finding profitability, I want you to keep watching, all right? And if not, keep scrolling, right? But ignore at your own peril because these are eight things that I learned throughout my whole entire journey that I wanna share with you. They're gonna massively improve your trading and help you focus on the right things. Rule number one, I want you to focus on the things that matter first, okay? Work on the things that matter first, and I see it all the time. People rush into trade live funds without first identifying what resonates with them as a trader, okay? You need to work out those kinks and develop a strategy, right, and a, a consistent approach before you actually rush in and trade live funds, all right? So the order of study I like to say is you come in and you watch the content and then you back test the content then once you're doing that at the same time during the day, watch price live, take mental trades and just observe without pushing the button, right? And once you can call the move consistently without having to push the button and it gets boring to you, that's when you move into a demo account, okay? Because if you're just focused on pushing a button rather than just actually going in and watching price live and taking those mental trades saying, okay, I'm putting my stop here, I'm entering here, I'm taking profit here mentally. Once you do that consistently, then you can go into demo. And then from there, you prove consistency in demo, then that's when you go on a small leverage live account or maybe take a small prop firm funding challenge, right? And then from there, that's when you learn about all the mental, all the mental things that you need to figure out about yourself, right? What causes you to go on tilt? What are my flaws? My money management's off, whatever it is, right? That's when you work on those things in a small leveraged environment. Then you can start scaling your capital. Then you can start using full leverage on a live account, whatever it is, right? but you need to do it in the right order first. And most people, they skip the beginning stuff and neglect it, and that's what comes and bites them in the end. And what happens is a lot of people, they come in and they become so frustrated, right? Because they're losing, right? They jump into live funds too early and they become really frustrated and it causes them to strategy hop, and that in itself is an endless loop. You can get stuck in that strategy hopping cycle, right? jumping from the next hot topic, what's on Twitter, what this person's winning with, you didn't make money that day, whatever it is, you can get stuck in that cycle and that is an endless loop. You're gonna be stuck there forever. Trust me, I was there in the beginning learning options, I was there learning small caps, but I had to go through that process to find what resonated with me as a trader. Then I started making money, right? Because I found what works for me and then I stopped caring about what everyone else was doing, right? So focus on the things that matter first. Find a few traders that you like Leverage their experience, right? They could be posting stuff on Twitter, on YouTube, whatever it is. Find a few traders that you resonate with. It could be their personality, it could be their trading style, the way their charts are, whatever it is, right? Find them, reverse engineer what they're doing. Take their little gold nuggets from their strategies and piece it into yours. Say, I like what he's doing. Oh, I like what he's doing. Uh, I don't really like that over there, what he's doing, but I wanna take this little piece and, and make it my own, right? That's what I did. That's going to help you fast track your learning. At the end of the day, Focus on the right things and ignore the noise, right? Only focus on what resonates with you as a trader. Now, rule number two, don't be stingy at the expense of time. If you lack a sense of direction or you feel lost in all the content that's out there, I know how it goes. There's 600 plus videos on ICT's YouTube channel. If you feel lost in all that content, he's got hours and hours and hours long of videos and he's coming out with more and more each day. If you feel lost, it does make sense to pay for others' guidance. Because at the end of the day, you're not paying for information. All the information that's out there is already out there for free, right? You're not paying for information. You're paying for guidance on what to actually focus on. It's just important to remember to do your due diligence before you go in and purchase a course or pay for a Discord, right? Do your due diligence, shop around, right? Find someone, like I said, that you identify with and then make a decision. Now by doing this, this is going to help you focus on your strengths and help you buy back your time and fast track your learning, okay? And I gotta say, if you're complaining about paying for someone else's time, right, and their experience, then you likely don't have the right mindset to succeed in trading anyways. Because trading, it requires an investment, right? You either invest your own amount of time by studying it and figuring it out on your own, or you can invest money to fast track it and seek the help of someone else. And you have to remember, time is your most valuable asset. Money comes and goes. 
but time just goes, right? So when I was younger, right, I paid for these Discord rooms. I paid to learn how to trade VWAP or version of the mean. I paid for all these things, right? And they led me to where I am today, right? But there's no substitute for hard work. So you either pay with time and it takes a lot longer, or you could help expedite that by paying for someone else's experience and leverage their time and experience to help you fast track your progress and your learning curve. Now, rule number three, don't believe everything that you read online, okay? What you're seeing on social media, they're mostly the highlights, right? No one's really posting losers. You might see a few break-evens even here and there. I'm guilty of it too, right? I found there really was no benefit to me posting losers because what if I did, everyone's a hindsight chartist in the end, right? Oh, you should have done this, should have done that, right? And it doesn't really benefit anybody else. So that's kind of why I stopped doing it. But everyone has losing trades, right? This month, I have a 60% win rate uh, in March. And you don't see me posting losers, right? But I post my winners, one, to help other people say, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what's working for Zach. This is what's working for Fair, Fair Value God, right? And they're there to help, right? And inspire and motivate. But you have to remember, you're only seeing the highlights and most of the content that's out there, right, is garbage. I'm sorry, but it really is. Most of the content you're seeing on Twitter, all these threads and these PDFs, a, a Twitter thread is not gonna make you profitable. A PDF isn't gonna make you profitable. A YouTube video is most likely not going to make you profitable, all right? The only thing that's gonna make you profitable is putting in the hours and the chart time, okay? And focusing on the right things and spending your time wisely, investing your time wisely, right? You can get stuck in this loop of watching content and it feels like you're doing something with your time, but you're really not. There's no substitute for live market analysis. Most of the content that you see online is garbage, like I said, but also it's designed to distract you, okay? It's designed to evoke an emotional response, get you emotionally invested in some kind of hot topic, right, that someone could use to get a nice little engagement boost on Twitter or get you to sucker into to buying something, right? All these things, they waste precious time. And by sifting through all this nonsense on social media, on YouTube, on Twitter, watching these endless videos where it feels like you're doing something but you're actually not, you're just stuck in that loop of learning instead of actually implementing, instead, do what I just said before. Focus and find a few traders, a group of people that you resonate with and find the people who are transparent, that seem authentic, whatever it is, and go all in on them. It doesn't have to be me, right? You can go find somebody else that you resonate with, but go all in on their strategy. Go all in on what they're doing and find those people, right, to study from. Reverse engineer what they're doing. Back test their concepts. What is the logic they're using? How are they getting in? How are they getting out? Where are their stops? All those things, you can really, you'll be surprised. You can really fast track your learning just by going on for free on people's Twitter. That's what I did. I found these people's little gold nuggets. I liked the standard deviations. I liked the power of three. I liked all these things and I took it and I ran with it, made it my own. And here I am today doing this full time at 26. You can do it too. And a nice quote that I heard from one of my family friends growing up is never take advice from someone who is not where you want to be in life. So the same thing goes with trading, right? Don't believe everything you're reading online. A lot of people are hiding behind these flashy lifestyles and these, they're hiding behind these empty promises online. But at the end of the day, you really want to deep down, do your due diligence and analyze, is this person walking the talk? Are they actually doing and trading the way that they're telling me to do, right? And are they showing receipts? Are they, are they proving authenticity, okay? And if not, that should be a red flag, right? Now, rule number four, perfection is unattainable. Being a perfectionist is okay, right? I'm one as well. I, I really go hard. Every single thing I do, I like to make it perfect. I like to do it to the best of my ability, right? But it can be your downfall in trading. It's a double-edged sword. No matter how hard you study ICT, you are going to have losing trades, okay? It does not matter how much you learn, how much you study, you're gonna have losers. Everyone likes to come into the market and they think that the more they learn, right, the less they're gonna lose, and that might be true in the very beginning, right? Because you're kind of finding an edge. But at a certain point, your edge is only so sharp, okay? So they think the more they implement into their strategy, the less they're gonna lose, but that's, that's a facade. It's false, because everyone has losers. You can have an A plus setup that you see on your chart and it still fails, 
wicks you out and goes in your direction that you thought it was, right? That's gonna happen. Everybody has losers, you can't do anything about it. It's all about how you handle those losses in the long term with risk management, psychology, all those things matter. It's all about how you handle those losses and bounce back. That's what defines a trader. It's not the wins, it's the losses. It's not like you're studying for a test in high school, right? Or you can get a, a, an A plus right, score, a 100% score, right? Those do come here and there month to month, but that's not how trading works, right? It's a game of probabilities over the long term. So if you can't weather four or five losses in a row, then one, you're probably likely risking too much, or two, you're trading with too much size and you can't handle it mentally, you need to lower that size, right? People hop in my DMs, they're like, Zach, I just can't hold a trade for more than 15 minutes. I, I, can't, I can't let it go against me, I can't watch it go against me. I have no problem letting it hit my stop, but I can't hold it to full TP or full terminus of the move I'm looking for. What, what can you give me, what kind of advice can you give me? And I always say, it sounds like you're trading with too much size. You need to lower that size. That way you're not as emotionally attached to the outcome of that trade. That way you can let it run. Let it, give it room to breathe, let it do its thing, and be patient, right? Patience, P-A-Y, shins, patience. It doesn't matter how much content you've consumed, setups are still going to fail, right? But as long as your edge performs more often than not, you have an edge in the market. And the nice thing about trading is you can take skewed risk to reward setups, two to ones, three to ones, whatever it is, and you don't even need to be right over half or 50% of the time. If you cannot mentally take a loss and you don't have that professional mindset of longevity, right, then you're not going to be able to succeed long term. So that's why perfection, you have to remember, is unattainable. You're gonna have losers and you have to be able to mentally accept losing as a part of the game. Rule number five, simplify and streamline your approach. You need to stop thinking so much and focus on executing flawlessly when your edge presents itself. You have to remember, the simpler the strategy, right, the less moving parts, the easier it is to execute consistently in the long term. It's often said that your model, your trading approach should fit on the back of a little business card, right? And if you have a ton of moving parts, that's going to have a profound impact on your ability to execute because you're gonna suffer from that analysis paralysis. You need a bunch, all these little things implemented into your approach that it's gonna make it a lot harder to execute on that when the time comes, especially if you're trading in smaller time frames. If you're trading like a sub one minute chart or you're trading a one minute chart, right? You have a couple minutes to kind of figure out if you wanna get in or not versus if you're trading the higher time frames, right? So, the less moving parts, the better, especially if you're a high frequency trader and you're trying to trade those smaller time frames. And one of the common pitfalls is, I see a lot of new people, they're trying to learn and they're trying to implement way too many things into their trading approach. And it causes them to get that analysis paralysis. And it goes back to what I said before. They think that the more they learn, the less they're gonna lose. But at the end of the day, your edge is only so sharp and you're gonna have losers, right? So focus on Keeping it simple, you gotta remember, complexity leads to analysis paralysis. Rule number six, focus on one thing at a time. Okay, focus on one thing at a time. There are countless ways to learn, and implement, and apply ICT concepts or any trading methodology in the market. If you try to learn all of them, then you're going to succeed at none of them. Instead of being a jack of all trades, be a master of one. It's better to be great at one thing than mediocre at many. Just pick one approach, pick one thing, and focus on proficiency, all right? Like I said, you wanna be a master of one, not a jack of many, not a jack of all trades. And so if you can just hunt a few setups a week, right? that's all you need, that's all you need. If you get 6% on an account each month, you're doubling your account in a year, all right? So I don't care what anybody says, having to trade every single day, day trading is not everyday trading, okay? You have to be able to sit there, look for your setups, and if nothing appears, you don't push the button, right? Day trading is not everyday trading. For me, personally, I am not a machine gunner, right? I'm a sharpshooter when it comes to trading. I have two shots every day, I'm not sitting here on a 15 second chart taking 20 trades a day, right? I wanna get one or two shots in and then I'm done, right? I got two shots in the chamber each morning. 
I'm aiming them, I'm hunting my A plus setup, I'm stalking them, and that's it, okay? I'm done. I'm not trying to sit there and waste my time or spend my entire life or day on a chart, all right? That, that defeats, to me, the whole purpose of trading. I wanna be one and done, maybe two and done, whatever it is, I wanna be in and out, right? I'm a ninja, I'm in there, right? I'm a ninja in the charts. And if you can frame your approach like that, right? Becoming a master of one and looking for the A plus setup and taking the shot when it's there, you're gonna see your win rate go up, you're gonna over trade less, you're gonna revenge trade less, and you're gonna see your equity curves stabilize, okay? And you're also gonna find like you're just way more relaxed in the charts. It's a lot less stressful when you are trying to take one or two trades a day versus like 10 or 12, right? So that's what I recommend you guys doing, especially if you're a beginner. Don't be trigger happy. Go in there and look and say, okay, what kind of trade do I wanna be? Do I wanna be sitting in front of my chart all day, every day? Or do I really wanna enjoy the fruits of my labor? Like, why am I doing this? It's for freedom, right? So why would you wanna sit there all day and take 20 trades, right? I'm trying to get in and out. I'm a sharpshooter, I'm in, I'm out. I break faces and I bounce, as Conor McGregor would say. Now, rule number seven, I want you to establish habits that ensure forward progress. You've probably heard the saying that consistency beats talent every day of the week, and it's true. Before you decide to start trading, you have to be willing to commit. Trading is a lifestyle, all right? I'm a firm believer that you either are a trader internally or you're not. Trading is not for the faint of heart. You either have it in you or you don't, right? You either have that dog in you or you don't because a lot of people, they can't handle the risk, right? They can't handle the idea of sitting in front of a chart and losing money after sitting there for five hours. Trading is not like a normal job. You can sit in front of your chart all day don't take a single trade and make zero dollars, right? It's not like a normal profession where the more work you put in, the more money you make, right? Or even worse, imagine you show up to work, you show up to the charts, and you sit there and work all day for four or five hours looking at the charts, taking trades, and instead of your boss paying you, you pay your boss to go to work. That was a big mindset or big hurdle, mindset shift that I had to take on when I first began, especially when I went full time. That's why I say trading is not for the faint of heart because you either have that in you or you don't. Now, rule number eight, I want you to shift your mindset. I kind of touched on it in the last point, right? But shift your mindset. Every trader, they experience ups and downs, okay? So how you deal with your setbacks, that's what defines you, right? It's not the winners, it's how you deal and bounce back from your losses. Trading is a way of life, right? It's all about your attitude and how you bounce back and how you approach each day. Losers, they adopt the victim mindset, right? Where winners, they take self-accountability for every single thing that happens to them. You have to be willing to work on yourself internally, but also externally. I find that if you can make yourself go to the gym each and every day and stick to a routine, you're gonna find that it's a lot easier to build that self-discipline outside the charts and you'll see it carry over into the charts. Self-reflection and brutal honesty are crucial to long-term success and building that professional mindset. You gotta remember that trading is forced self-discovery, right? It's gonna put you through that fire and you're gonna be forged and come out the other end by fire. So along the way and through the process, you're gonna be forced to look internally and identify your flaws and what's holding you back and fix and work on those things. A lot of people, they can't handle that. They can't take accountability for their actions and work on themselves and that's why they'd never make it. And if you don't, if you don't look internally and fix and self-analyze and do what needs to be done to work on yourself and develop yourself, the market's going to expose and then it's going to take everything from you. It's gonna take all your money, it's gonna take all your mental capital, all your, even your life, right? I've seen people go in and they lose everything, right? They lose the relationships, they lose the money, they lose the kids, all because they couldn't look internally and fix what was going on in here and in here, right? So you either are going to succeed, right? and come out a whole different person almost than who you were before trading, or you're going to get everything taken from you and you're gonna give up. So that was eight rules for struggling ICT traders. And if you made it to the end of the video, what I want you to do is hit the like button, smash the subscribe button if you liked the video, drop a comment, let me know what you're struggling with and what kind of videos you might wanna see, and I'll see you in the next one.